see that I have hair I have hair um <clears throat> this is some prep that I do when I decide on putting together a uh, a game uh, in Traveler so I know uh, Shauner has a, a really cool little um, program that he's created and uh, you could use that where uh, he has the map and everything. I believe he has it uh, available for people to um, download from source and, uh, and uh, you know, um, use it at their whim if they are a Python programmer. Um, I love this kind of area of uh, space I'm not a big fan of going over to uh, where everybody else typically goes like Spinward Marshes or, or something like that uh, old expanses that sort of thing I am more this area here there's some very interesting areas here uh, particularly uh, concerning like the uh, Duke of Stoner, uh, which is the uh, kind of the uh, it's, they're kind of like a uh, a breakaway from the uh, original Second Imperium. So all the nobles that fled during that stage of uh, of, of time came over here and uh, created their own kind of little. Uh, mini empire which uh, and there's a lot of real interesting history between the Shukikar Shukikikar Shukikikar uh, or the Shuki I call them the Shuki just for short um, and the Glimmer Drift uh, Federation down here uh, the Pirates of Heron down in this area there's a lot of cool stuff going on. So I like, you know, you could do your own thing, of course. But uh, when I look for something to start a new group with, um, I'm going to basically um, look for something out in the region that I can like I want to I want to kind of get a good kind of little little foundation so I'm gonna go down here this this is an interesting area uh, right before the uh, 2000 world so this is basically the Kakri um, their empire spreading out over here and it's being stopped basically by a bunch of uh, different federations here the hive down here we got all these little mini empires here that have been pretty efficient in trying to hold off what's going on here with these uh these collectives right? that's what they want to call themselves um and you'll see a lot of little breakaway regions and stuff but i like all of these little mini uh, empires going on here which is really cool there's a lot of you can look up a lot of this information this is a free website and it's so loaded full of cool cool stuff that you can utilize in your game um, so we are going to go with someplace around here and I think this will be a great spot to start um, so we're gonna pick this area here I'm looking for you know like cluster areas that uh, you know uh, a ship with a basically a single jump capability can do a lot and so if you pull out a little bit you can see that um, there uh, there you can kind of see all these uh, one jump areas here which they could go all over the place here if they really wanted to and and uh, and have fun so 
Um, but that's further on down the road. I'm looking basically at a startup area here with some interest. So we have uh, an empire over here called the United Pact. We have a little empire down here called the uh, Yeskoth Corporate. So um, you can read up on those or you can make up your own stuff about these uh, uh, different mini empires. So I'm going to start uh, basically with this region here. Um, this is, I've kind of like pre-scouted this area. Like you can go all over the place and, and see if there's an interesting spot for you to start and develop your campaign over. This uh, system here, you can uh, bring up on the side here. It'll give you a whole bunch of information. Get a, let's say we do a jump four picture of this entire region. So this is nice. And you can right click and you can save image as. And uh, you can call it uh, starting or jump map, but it's, I'm just going to default it to jump map. So that's been downloaded. Uh, so let's go back into here. So yeah, centering on uh, Kyre here. And uh, you can generate world map, uh, which uh, will do this. Do, do, do. So there we go. This is kind of a simple uh, map that has been generated based on um, the way that it is designed on, as uh, with the world profile. So um, you could use this. You can take this, modify it, do whatever you want, uh, or you can make your own um, your own map. Uh, that's always cool to do. I'm thirsty. I need some coffee. Um, so all this cool stuff you can do with just this free travelermap.com. So, um, also, uh, like I said, I'm going to print. So I'm going to print, um, I can print the neighborhood if I want to, uh, with all this information here. I could expand all this information, so I'm just going to cancel this. Uh, let's get back out of here. Let's see, uh, will this actually open up everything here? Economics, culture, this is all really cool information that you can really um, work with. So you can see that these guys are uh, uh, xenophilic as far as their uh, acceptance is. Uh, Heterogeneity, uh, discordant, so expect a lot of uh, different things on there. Somewhat typical for strangeness, so it's not a very strange uh, area. Symbols, abstract, so we're going to have a lot of weird stuff as far as uh, symbols go. So their language and stuff might be a little weird for people to uh, catch on to. Like, uh, they'll, it, it, it's just stuff that you can key on and, and work with. And like I say, you don't have to go with what you see here. You can really, um, create your own ideas and ignore all this information and make your own. So, but I like using this map and, um, it, it, it spares me the time of going through and generating world and stuff like that. But you know, if you want to do that, that's fine too. There's been times where I have generated my own subsectors myself by rolling dice and, uh, you know, building on that. So let's go to print. So let's, uh, <clears throat> let's go ahead. You can use it. You can print it to a PDF, which you can hand out to your players online. Let's go with a PDF here. Print to PDF. So print. I'm gonna call this uh, Kyre. Oh. Save. 
I have my mic in the way, so one-handed typing is... Alrighty, so I'm looking at the PDF here, and it gives you all the information on the, all the other planets. It gives you a basic diagram of how to read the, uh, the universal profile of the planet. Or, or the, I mean the system, uh, the, with the main, excuse me, with the main planet in particular. And uh, all the interesting um, planets in the neighborhood. And this is a good start point. I wouldn't even bother going any further than this period. Because there's no point, it depends on how... Uh, the players react to your game and if they want to continue on and do multi sessions in this same area It's it's cool, but uh, the reason why I like this this planet here. This is kind of like um, with this uh, high dense atmosphere 20% water on the surface so if if the players want to they can they have a ship capable of uh, refining the uh, <clears throat> the hydrogen out of the uh, out of the water, they can do that. It's got a good starport. It's not it's not meant for like uh, working on uh, so much of the um, uh, starfaring craft, but more spacefaring craft. So big differences. You know, they, probably very limited on their jump drive stuff. So most of that would probably be uh, more military. And their technology is pretty high, so it's like what a 14, so it's pretty good. Big population, civil service bureaucracy, great. It's a unified basic government, but it's got a lot of red tape. Law level is pretty high, so you know you don't mess around with these guys. Typically, they take themselves fairly serious, so you'll have uh, a lot of uh, um, <coughs> police presence and this looks like you know something you could use like a, a cloud city kind of idea so you'll have like different cloud cities or uh, cities clinging to uh, like high mountain peaks and stuff like that and growing out from those areas and uh, possibly having you know you could think of like uh, various channel ways uh, like uh, forms of transportation to get them down to the lower more denser areas and those places would be like you know um, uh, have some sort of like maybe they they have like minerals and stuff like that that they mine from down you know on the surface further and uh, that's where all the low lowlifes basically live and and, uh, and uh, try to echo to living where everybody else who uh, makes uh, better um, you know government officials and stuff like that you know they're, they're higher up they will uh, receive more of the benefits of living with uh, in the higher areas where they can have access to uh, more generally breathable atmosphere um, you can have these uh, the natives of these planets uh, adequately breathe this dense atmosphere where those who visit it will have to use some sort of, uh, you know, uh, breathing device that would uh, uh, make it a little easier for them. I mean, they could, you know, breathe on this planet, uh, on this planet as long as they're in this high uh, altitude. And, uh, um, like, you know, as you're bringing this stuff up you're coming with the ideas of how you're gonna uh, create this world and present it and uh, also it's got two gas giants uh, one planetoid belt and several seven other worlds so you can create those worlds on the fly different kinds of you know climates temperates that sort of stuff they will be all basically mm, or you know non-habitable or like semi-habitable where uh, you can build on that um, and uh, and come up with all kinds of ways to interact into this system. Non-aligned, unclaimed uh, system. They don't have anybody ruling over them, and that's pretty cool. 
I believe there is a couple of, uh, or there might be at least one planet. I think uh, this one here has uh, is being occupied uh, like a captive planet from uh, another empire or something. I haven't checked in on that, but it did have some interesting things. Uh, this little area down here is an uh, asteroid belt, but they're like uh, tech level 7. So something weird happened here where the uh, technology lagged behind. So they're living in in kind of like these uh, the space stations where it's, it's kind of like the 70s uh, space program <laughs> back, back in the 70s. So you can imagine that. Uh, so their technology would be all kind of like that. So they would be loving it to have this uh, Tech 14 uh, technology come over here. And there's probably going to be some real interesting interactions uh, with that if the, if the players ever get to this spot and do some trading. Uh, plus the two empires on the sides here. You see one on this map, one is off the map. These two are like larger, probably vying for power. Um, in this region so they're probably sending spies and organizing like uh, coups and stuff like that or uh, arranging trade deals between you know certain factions on these worlds in order to gain favor and uh, spread their empire a little bit easy like like you know grabbing onto these locations because there's probably some pretty good resources in this area that they can utilize right for their fighting efforts against the, the Kakri so um, that would be interesting in itself. So this kind of prep is kind of like your um, your political prep. I, I consider everything that you're working on NPCs. The planets are NPCs. Space stations are NPCs. The uh, spaceships are NPCs. Uh, you got to think of it that way. Um, <clears throat> and you also, th I always think it in terms of choke points too. So. Um, as well so uh, your sh starships are a choke point because uh, they're probably old not like like not brand new straight off the factory uh, line uh, starships they are in need of a lot of repair and they're pretty damn expensive even even though that they're uh, flying pieces of junk that you have to really take in consideration there as well. I'll print this if, and for the next session so you can see what my notebook will look like when I when I start uh, doing this. So find an interesting area with a lot of interesting um, outside uh, influences. You're going to basically concentrate on just the one planet here so have that printed out for your for your notes and start coming up with some ideas so once i have this printed i'm going to be writing all over this sheet and uh writing my ideas down and uh it's i'm going to have a, a lot of of stuff um populated on here as i'm writing ideas i might draw some pictures of some some concepts of of how i want to present certain uh, cities and stuff like that uh, like what I was talking about moments ago about uh, um, how I wanted to um, have uh, transport tubes down to the surface and stuff like that this is all tech 14 so you have to take this technology and I use this as kind of my general rule this is their peak technology this is what the military and secret um, secret military operations all that stuff anything military or linked to the government and running of the administration of this planet and military wise will be d anything issued to the um to the typical consumer will likely be under tech two techs below i, I usually go two techs below so if this is 14, then uh, Tech 12 would be kind of the uh, upper limit of what you would typically see a civilian owning. So their their grab vehicles and stuff like that will typically be you know Tech 12 ish, that sort of stuff. Uh, certain um, 
certain special interest groups will end up having the Tech 13 stuff, but as far as the military itself, that will be that peak technology. So keep that in mind because, you know, just the same as we have here on real Earth, um, they're not, the military and everything has technology far beyond what we have uh, to the c civilians. Your, your computers that you are running are nothing compared to what the military has in their arsenal. So and keep that in mind because that's that's what we have in, in reality as well so um and uh and use that you know it's going to be part of uh of your uh you know the 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 coolness about this is you can discover cool technology as as the players you know a, a, a interact with this uh society and uh, then you're going to have to work on how this uh, government as an NPC works. And then what it's, uh, you know, it's little uh, uh, independent programs within that government, how they work and how they interact with uh, policies with uh, off-worlders um, or uh, trade agreements and stuff like that. Maybe you need to get special licenses for, you know, your ship and stuff like that in order to trade and operate within their system. And there, with this technology, there's going to, like I say, there's going to be a lot of, um, uh, there's going to be a lot of colonies uh, developed on these other uh, seven worlds here and the planetoid belt. So, um, and the gas giants, you got gas giants, they're probably going to have like dozens of moons on each gas giant. And you're going to probably have many moons around these seven worlds. So um, it's it's going to be a big area to explore. You could have the uh, players start off with basically a ship's boat and uh, trying to... Uh, um, arrange a way to uh, gain access onto an actual starship that would be cool because you're you're kind of thinking in in terms of and that's bottle bottlenecking um, so uh, whether or not uh, you want to give them a ship to work off of right away that is jump capable that's entirely up to you uh, that would mean you'd have to be fully ready to uh, um, you know have them go from place to place but you know like like those ships usually need a little bit of uh fix up repair that sort of stuff but you're not going to give them like i say a uh a brand new ship off the off the uh <laughs> off the assembly line they will probably have to uh afford something that's at least um at least 40 to 60 years old so yeah take a look at what's going on around here and come up with ideas of, of some uh, interesting intrigue going on between these NPCs and uh, build on that and uh, and your players they're gonna be like starting from grassroots you know uh, like I say probably with a ship's boat or even uh, um, a ship that may need repairs in order to uh, start doing uh, their uh, jump flight. So they may have to do a few errands around here in order to get themselves enough money to accumulate the uh, what they need to buy the parts necessary to uh, uh, make their ship functional. And these are goals, you know, goals for the for the players. Um, to eventually uh, you know get themselves up and running and uh, you you don't have to start them off with a fully functional sh I never do um, <laughs> I always make it challenging for them to get that freedom because you know that your players are gonna want that freedom and you're you're gonna be able to uh, you know, troll them along here to uh, to garnish that uh, uh, ability to uh, have that freedom of movement and that uh, the catharsis of, uh, of gaining that ability finally will set in they'll be wow we we earned this one you know um, 
and make a bunch of situations you know that uh, I'll get into on the next one uh, I'll, I'll have all kinds of things on like uh, a job board for them which I will uh, divvy out uh, ideas for you know the ventures that they will partake in and of course they will always do their own thing so uh, be prepared for uh, some uh, to add in a lot of extra NPCs in there uh, that you'll create uh, that will interact with the players uh, on the fly so um, a lot of times I won't assign roles but I'll assign like I'll, I'll, I'll designate a few ideas about uh, a character like certain quirks and qualities and stuff like that but not assign them like the role of the bartender or the role of the uh, ship salesman or the uh, starport custodian or whatever it, I just have these uh, ideas lying about and that way I can assign them to whatever whoever they're asking at the time and that's that's how I roll with with a lot of my um, a lot of my unimportant NPCs because sometimes they end up being important but you and you want to have like some idea of how you're gonna present them like on the fly so um, that's always good to have but that's stuff in our next session so but giving you a little bit of insight on where I go next so here we are and just just for your information this is not uh, this is not the game that I am uh, building here for my uh, discord uh, gaming group which is coming up for traveler but this gives you the idea of, of where I uh, how I start up my campaign and uh, where I start basically and how I start to build ideas upon it. Hope that was something interesting enough for you to uh, watch and listen to me uh, through and uh, and uh, hopefully this uh, you know inspires you out there to uh, start creating some ideas for a uh, traveler game uh, by yourself right you know just just take take some inspiration on what I do and I'm I'm not saying this is the way to do it um, there's other people that have other ideas and I am very interested in hearing you know different ideas as well on how like you know, say how Shauner Shauner is one, one of the other um, uh, youtubers out there that gets into the talk about uh, traveler and you know um, <clears throat> this is just the way I go about it if I am using say the actual traveler um, lore and everything um, if it was my own uh, systems and stuff like that you know hey, you could do it you can do it that way as well and you know, I would probably you know end up doing exactly the same thing anyways uh, picking a spot and going from there so just like this yeah that's all I have to say about this right now I uh, hope you enjoyed this little uh, spiel I guess or teaching technique tip whatever um talk to you guys soon and uh, hope you um subscribe see ya